Hey everybody, so I want to do a video on culling fish. Now this is kind of, it's a necessity when you're line breeding fish and specifically if you're doing uh, like certain colors or patterns uh, when you're breeding fish they could spit out uh, not the highest quality pattern or color that you're looking for. Everybody calls fish. Now the, I'm sure farms, I don't know what they do with it but uh, you know they might be tossing fish away um, I basically recycle fish and you might not like what I'm about to say but I do feed my calls to my axolotls um, it's a natural food source for them instead of killing uh, these fish which might upset you um, they're going to feed another um, fish or amphibian um, and I'm about to call my Vienna guppies. I saw last night that there's a few that have some bent spines, and that's something that I don't want to breed back into uh, the colony. So I'm going to show you guys, uh, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, calling some guppies. So let's see which ones I'm talking about. All right, so I turned the air, the air pump off down there so it's a little bit quieter. But I want to show you uh, these are my two two of the three main guppy tanks. That's the other one and I noticed some some fish that need removed from this colony And let me see if I can find that one right there See how his spines not straight. That's a female uh, that needs removed and Then there there's basically two or three in here that are like that um, one's really small um, but also like this guy has a black tail. The Vienna guppies, like, so here's the male. They look really nice. The females are plain. You know, there's nothing to the females. But you, the female with the, the black tail, uh, this right here is a male. It looks like a male, yeah, that's a male. That needs to come out because I don't want that plain guppy breeding back into this Vienna guppy line. I need to keep this line straight. Here's another, um, guppy that's got a little bit of a bent spine you know I'm trying to keep this line true you can see like you know these stunning males and unfortunately and there's a male right there with a messed up spine uh, he's getting blocked it's kind of in the back I don't know where he went maybe right there right. right there so he's got the color and pattern but with that spine I need to get that out now onto this tank. So this was the blue neons, and now they got mixed with some others. It's becoming like a mixed tank. Now these fish, I will call out any spine issues, which honestly, I don't see any spine issues. Now for black tuxedo, or the blue tuxedos, that would be like this guy right here, this guy right here. Um, those are fine. Now the ones that have like the red in the tail, that's from this line. It's just a different gene that had popped out. Um, those would be called out, but I wouldn't feed those. Like those are completely healthy guppies. Um, I would move them to a mixed guppy tank. And that's what I saw as a mutt guppy. But you know, they still have awesome colors and patterns. Um, but that's how you basically call tanks. So if I was trying to continue this uh, tuxedo line, anything with red would have to come out. Um, because you don't want that red breeding back in because then you're going to get more and more reds. Um, and then if you're trying to do specific, like this guy up here is kind of like the Dumbo variety, Dumbo ear. His, you can see his fins are a lot bigger. Sorry about the focusing. Um, that would be something that you would want to try to breed in if you're trying to do a Dumbo ear line. Um, and then you would try to get, like this guy's really bright blue, I would breed that. That would be my male breeder. I put him with the females uh, to can you continue the line. But this isn't a line I'm really trying to go after. Um, I mixed up, mixed that male with the green cobra females, and I'm getting some cool patterns and colors. But this is the main one. So this guy needs to come out just because of his pattern. And he's completely healthy, no bent spine issue. So I'm just going to pop him over to this tank and let this tank breed as it goes. But uh, any fish in here that has a deformity is going to end up in the axolotl tank. All right, so I had four with uh, the bad spines. 
They're just in this little specimen container and I'll take that out to the actual wild tanks. I caught one or two out that were not the correct pattern for the Vienna guppies there over here. Um, there's still, you know, one or two more I need to catch out um, to try to keep this line straight. And uh, I'll do that in a little bit, but we're gonna take this over and I, I'll just dump this right into the axolotl tank. All right, so let's talk about the axolotls. You might notice it's covered in duckweed and that is by design for two reasons. One, um, axolotls climb all over everything. There is Anubius and uh, Crips in there. So you see the plants are doing pretty well, um, but the duckweed serves two purposes, one, is to pull nitrates out. Um, you know, axolotls are messy, so the extra nitrate removal that duckweed does is great. And the second thing is, it helps keep evaporation down. So I do keep the water level a little bit lower, and that's because every once in a while they'll zoom up and splash at the top. You can see there's some duckweed that splashed out. Um, so I keep the water level a little bit lower. And you can see there's a lot of tannins in the water. That's from that driftwood. They like it dimmer. So this is a Fluval Nano light um, set to about 70%, I believe, brightness. And then with all that duckweed, it, you know, it keeps it darker. But I'm going to go ahead and just pour these guys in. And there they go. And they'll, they'll eventually find their way to the axolotls. There is two in here, they're a breeding pair. Um, there's obviously one right here. And the other one's back there. Uh, get the reflection. Back there in the, the crypt. But these guys, I don't know how good their eyesight is, but if something, you know, swims in front of them, they'll try to grab it. And, um, you know, you guys might not like that, but it's the best way to um, basically recycle the food chain. All right, I hope that was a quick video, just kind of show you the basics of calling uh, at least a guppy uh, group. And I, I mean, I don't really know how to go more in depth than, you know, you're basically pulling out something that either has a deformity, which I recycle to the axolotls, doesn't have the correct color or pattern if you're trying to keep a line straight. And this goes, not just guppies, but this can go for especially shrimp. So shrimp, you, you need to let them grow a little bit. You can't call them when they're, you know, this big, but once they get a little bit bigger, you want to get them out of the tank if you're trying to keep a line straight before they breathe back and then you're just, you're not keeping that line straight. Eventually, at least with shrimp, the more and more you call and the more and more you lock in that pattern or color that you're going for, the easier it gets and the more straight the line stays. Now with the Vienna guppies, this is something I need to keep on because I'm trying to keep that awesome pattern there. And um, there's a bunch of fry I saw in there while I was doing this, and I won't know what to call out until they put on some size. So I'm gonna keep feeding these guys. I've been giving them, giving them a lot of frozen food and live baby brine uh, lately. So I'm trying to really pump them up because there's a waiting list for these guppies. So I know I could honestly sell some of the males right now, but you know, if you want a male, that wouldn't be a problem. But if you're trying to get a, a breeding pair or a trio, it's going to be a while because these females are popping out more males than females, and I can't sell off the breeding females right now. But anyways, guys, if you thought this video was helpful, hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And um, as always, keep taking it along. See you guys.